typhoid fever. And please remember that this is not the same as typhus. Typhus is a completely different medical condition. Typhoid fever is something that is acquired because of contaminated food or water. And the organism that is responsible is known as Salmonella typhi. So that's very important to remember. And unfortunately, a rather basic thing can be the culprit, and that is inadequate hygiene. And this medical condition is endemic in certain geographic areas, and one of those is the Indian subcontinent. If a person is indeed traveling to that part of the world, then it is a good idea for them to get the typhoid vaccine. So if somebody does develop typhoid fever, what type of symptoms would they have? A lot of these symptoms are very general. Fever, headache, arthralgias. Patient will not want to eat anything. Experience of abdominal pain. During physical exam, however, in up to 20% of patients, you can see a rather characteristic rash known as rose spots. And these are pink blanching lesions. And I'll show you a picture. This is a child with these rose spots, obviously a child that has typhoid fever. And this is an adult with rose spots. As you can see, they're quite characteristic. And the fact that they're blanching is important because what that means is that when you stretch the skin apart, the rose spot will slightly disappear. That's what blanching means. Another characteristic finding that can help you come to a conclusion is the spleen being enlarged, splenomegaly. Diagnosis involves cultures. Do all cultures blood culture, stool culture, and urine culture. And this will help you identify the organism Salmonella typhi. Wanted to mention the prognosis of this because the mortality rate is actually quite high. It's 12%. Now they may not seem that high because 12 is not that high of a number, but you have to remember this is just a simple infection that someone gets simply because they didn't have proper hygiene and didn't uh, boil their water or didn't cook their food. So, and especially in endemic areas like India, something that could be so easily preventable occurs so often and serious enough that 12% of the time the patient dies. Treatment. Treatment of typhoid fever involves a few antibiotics. The first thing that you do is give ceftriaxone as an IM shot, about one gram. And then you would give an antibiotic such as ciprofloxacin, usually 500 milligrams orally twice a day for about 10 to 14 days. And then if the patient is severe, you can add a steroid such as prednisone anywhere from about 20 to 40 milligrams orally once a day for the first three days. And then also please stress to the patient that they should have adequate nutrition because the 12% mortality most commonly occurs in people who are undernourished, malnourished. So this is important. And like I had previously touched upon, 
Prevention is very important and it's so basic. Things like boiling the water that you end up drinking or proper food preparation. And also advice to those who are traveling to endemic areas is be careful about what you eat. It's simple advice, but you would be surprised at how ill you can get if you eat the wrong things. So now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes. An adult develops insidious onset of a severe infectious disease. The condition is characterized initially by high fever, headache, pharyngitis, and arthralgias. Patient then goes on to develop intestinal complaints of constipation, anorexia, abdominal pain, and tenderness. During the second week of the illness, he has a rash with discrete pink blanching lesions on the chest and abdomen. The rash resolves about three days later. By the third week of the disease, the patient appears very ill and has developed florid diarrhea that is positive for occult blood. During the same period, the man also develops secondary pneumococcal pneumonia. At the height of the patient's illness, he was stuporous and had short periods of delirium. The spleen was palpable during this period. Blood studies demonstrate leukopenia, anemia, liver function abnormalities, and a mild consumption coagulopathy. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Long clinical stems like this give you a lot of clues, and this one definitely points toward typhoid. And finally, your patient consults you regarding traveling abroad. Eventually, you introduce the topic of typhoid because you know he is planning a trip into a country for which typhoid vaccine is recommended. To which of the following regions is he planning to travel? Well, if the answer choice is the one that screams out is choice B because typhoid is definitely endemic in India.